Okay, my outstanding friends. Get a cup of tea, cup of coffee, soda, glass of water, whatever you want, because if you get interested in this, you are going to need to watch this for a little while to understand the complexity of what we're dealing with here and the character assassinations that we have seen throughout history. In my lifetime, it started with Velikovsky. Destroying Velikovsky by the intellectual racketeers and that's what they are now peer review is nothing more than racketeering they all gang together and attack anybody that doesn't say what they want him to say if you don't repeat what you're told to say you're done and he will not repeat and he is a he's a hero to me too the cms mcgowich and i am going to show that he is correct in a manner they're not actually constructed pyramids but they are not what they think they are. They are just precisely like this. All right, and you know what that is? That's a dragon scale. Those are dragon scales. And I have shown a dragon that is 1,100 miles long. How big do you think the scales would be? Okay, my outstanding friends, you are in for a Z treat. What do you see there? Well, you see right there, basically what you see right there. And what do you see right there? That is a dragon scale. This is the blood coming from the dragon scale right up the side. That's the corner of the dragon scale. And that right there, my friends, is also a dragon scale. Now, you see all of these lines in the structure of this dragon scale? Well, do you also see all the lines and the structure within this dragon scale? Well, this dragon scale is that dragon scale right there. All right, let me turn on the light. All right, now, what do we see? Well, we see a dragon scale. And there it is right there. All right, it looks like a pyramid to me. And that right there is blood. And that blood runs up the side. It's not just in one spot. And there's also over this side, there's blood on the bottom. They lay like this. All right. And then there is a, a slurpy spot underneath here that lets them slide back and forth. The blood services them. We were looking at this in the microscope a, a minute ago. That's the tab that holds them in position so that they can slide around from below. They sit in this, this you know, crevice and that's why they can move around and they are articulated and you say oh Roger how can you prove that this over here is from a dragon well I can prove it because it is from Typhon and here is the dragon scales and I believe this is what Sam Oscar Osmogabich uh, Os Os I think is how you pronounce it is seeing over in Bosnia same thing these are a mile and a half wide each one of these and they look like pyramids to me. And this whole thing is a dragon. It runs all the way from here, right there, all the way over to here, which is his head and his flared, flashing red eye. All spoken about, all written about in the text from Apollodorus. You want to go look it up? 1.6.3. Apollodorus wrote and, uh, written. 180 BC. Now, this is the dragon's throat. It goes all the way down. And these are just more dragon scales up here. Now, these archaeologists are so against this, they refuse to examine this because it destroys literally everything they said. Sam Osmogowicz was correct. He's 100% right and he's 100% wrong. Nobody built that. It just happens to be pyramids that were from these ancient dragons. This dragon goes all the way across North Africa. All the way across. And these are his ta this tail is where I showed you these scales. And this is all transition metals running off from these dead decaying body parts which are you know everything has, has bodily fluids in it. That's what all this stuff is. These are all bodily fluids. His neck is only way up here. All right. These are all bodily fluids. I have a better shot of this. And he's attacking this gigantic fish 
in the desert in Africa. Now, you should come up here and take a look at it if you're a true scientist. If you're not a true scientist, if you're an academic, then you are not a true scientist and you will discredit this and demean me immediately. And of course, Sam will never see his, his right and I will never, and uh, Velikovsky will never, because we have a, a bunch of thugs who are called peer reviewers that say, we all agree, so you're wrong. It doesn't matter what, you, what evidence you support. As long as they have their friends agreeing with them, they're like a pig in slop. They all just want to be in that slop together and want to discredit anybody that takes away from their status. And I'm going to tell you something right now. Their status is dog do at the moment especially Yale unbelievable how resistant to truth Yale University is that's my opinion I've submitted this stuff to them for 10 to 12 years now they finally took credit for having a global worldwide flood that preserved all the mud fossils perfectly they agree to that now they just slid a paper under the, ta under the table so nobody would see it they put it out in 2016 it says that they were perfectly preserved biota, which means creatures and plants, in one single layer, worldwide basic flood precipitation. They could throw all these words in that don't mean anything. It was a global flood of salty waters, and the, the silicates, which are nothing more than these runoff of bodily fluids, created these nucleophilic substitutions, which made all of these mud fossils turn exactly perfect one side's flat because there was a flood they laid like this i have my stuff as dna tested and cat scan and everything and i have huge things that is a that right there is a hair follicle you think i'm silly i can show you that's the erector pili muscle sticks up like this so your hair can stand up on end that right there is the sebaceous glands the oil the hair and that's where the hair comes up and those two spots right there are the blood vessels to come in the bottom the hair goes right up there and comes straight up and this is a curly haired person because it has a flat spot <laughs> where it comes out I, I i posted about this and i said gee it's kind of crazy because it's got a flat spot coming out i thought hairs were round and people could chimed in they said no, no i have curly hair and one side's flat i never heard of that before i'm just taking their word for it Okay, I made a statement before about sebaceous glands, erector muscles, blood vessels, hair follicles. There it is right there, my friend. And that is a little bigger than the one that's in your face. That right there is the erector muscle attachment, the pili muscle. And what that does is it lets your hair stand up on edge. Maybe this is from a guy's arm or I don't know where. You know how you <gasps> get freaked out when you do that? Well, that's that muscle that does it. Well, what is this? Well, that's the juicer. That's the oily gland that juices the, the hair follicle, so the, the hair so that it slides out nice. What is that? What's those two little round dots? Well, guess what they are? They're right there. There's an artery in a vein. And what's this? Your hair grows down and then up. You see this? It grows from here down, it turns around, and comes up. And that's the top where the skin would be around it. But it's not all the way up here. This is way down here. All right. And I believe this sebaceous gland has slid down with a bunch of slurpy with it. You can see it if you pay attention. This is supposed to be way up here. All right. So it's not supposed to be way down here. But I think it slid down because it's obviously here. Now, is this wrong? I don't think so. I think it's right, but this slid down, because I can see some goop around the edge here where all this might have come down together. I don't know, That's what I, but I can tell you right now, there's no question, zero question. That is a hair follicle, and it's, I figured it out right around 500 times what an average human being would be, which makes it a six-foot guy would be 3,000 feet tall. That's, you know, pretty well fully grown. 3,000 feet is a little over half a mile, which really is not, that's not even gigantic. I mean, it's not. That creature, a half a mile creature, could be a tick on the dragon in Morocco. I think it's 1,100 miles long.
1100 this is only a half that's 2200 times bigger than somebody that would be you know if they if they grew to be the size of Typhon which Typhon is kind of an exception I believe as they say he was a, he was a real he was a monster there's no getting around that okay I'm just gonna really outline this again shown it many many times if you're new here's the dragon from here all the way across and the feathers really end up going way out to here they have these flared tails now if you can't see it here I want you to come up you have Google Earth this is North Africa Morocco Mauritania all in that area this is a fish and he is spitting his stuff right down onto that fish to try to kill him so what are we looking at there this is what we're looking at there here he is right here uh, he's outlined this is all his dragon scaled body this is his dragon scaled throat these are his winged unkempt furry feathery hairy body that was written about in Apollodorus read it 1.6.3 Apollodorus from the BC era they knew about these these are on maps he's shown on maps this is not somebody's imagination this was mythology, which was the ancient lore, the ancient stories, not ancient, you know, things to make up and scare kids. They were the stories that were told. And now we call them, well, if it's a myth, it's got to be a silly story. No, it's not. It's got to be their ancient stories that were now pretty well confirmed true as far as I'm concerned. So here's what they show is Typhon here. Here he is. You know, these are just artist renditions of what he must have looked like, but his thighs are of a human type, and then he goes into all this coily stuff. And I'm telling you, he's there. Now, he didn't have a face like that. He had a, he had a dragon face. This is his face right here. This is his dragon face. There's his red flaring eye. All of this is stuff that he spit down onto that fish. All of that black stuff was spit down onto that fish. And his throat was cut in the desert, they claim, by Zeus. And here's the picture. They have some from ancient picture showing Zeus trying to kill Typhon with his thunderbolts. And they said he was, he was cut by his great and mighty sword. And again, they have actual maps showing this. Now, these are my, this is DNA tested. This is a giant fingertip. That's where the fingernail was. This is from a hand that's about four feet wide. I have a bigger one than that. Here's the hand itself, the palm. This is the skin, which is grip skin, all the silver stuff. That's the really tough skin on your fingers and toes, and that's just made to peel off. Basically, that's expendable. Now, on the um, CAT scans, here's what it, you can't really tell because nucleophilic substitution means whatever was there is going to be invaded and replaced with all new chemistry. However, there's a taste of difference when you get down into the bone area. Just a little bit of difference. So you see a little highlighted area. You don't see a full, you know, this is a CAT scan. It's very well done, too. Jesse Garant and Associates did the CAT scans. They did seven CAT scans for us. And it brought out details that you normally can't see. Now, this was, I, this was also a CAT scan. This is a, a lung, a human lung. There's nobody's going to deny this. Nobody can deny it. And that one is too. Now, this one didn't have the, this is called pleura, this fabric. And that's, that's what a lung does. It's a, a rubber bag. Now, once you take the rubber bag off, you get down into here where is the alveoli. These are the little holes that, that take in the air and exchange the oxygen. Now, that's these holes right here. You see? Now, this lung somehow lost its pleura and ended up this way in the ground. And this being in the mud, it didn't know much difference from being in the body. So the blood collected in here and it just settled in there as blood. When I took it out of the ground, this is what happened. That blood just sort of leaked out of those little red blood holes. Right here. So it was laying like this. You take it out of the ground, and wherever the mud was encapsulated, mud is nothing more than eroded flesh. That's all it is. It's eroded flesh, red clay, and mud. That's all it is. And, um, and the, this is different, though. This is fascia. 
Fascia is a different situation than uh, um, uh, tissues. Well, it's a tissue, but it's, uh, it's a, a membrane. And it is made out of collagens. And collagens are a rubber fabric. That fabric is prone to invasion by aluminum silicates. And those two, see this aluminum silicates, A-L-S-I, right next to each other on a periodic table. For some reason, those two clicked together and bonded with the collagen and created literally rubber bags around all of these organs and so forth. All the other stuff boiled off. Even the bones, primarily bones turn to, um, turn into, you know, mud. But this one here didn't. This is a different, this one preserved in the mud fossil way. And I believe this one here is from one of the other body parts I have here. This is maybe a wrist bone or something. It's, it's not big, but it's, you know, it's fairly good. It's much bigger than ours. And there was just blood coming out of this. You can get blood out of these all you want. Maybe blood is saturated with blood. And I mean saturated because primarily the fingertips. You go into the fingertips and you got blood coming out of your earlobes. There's just blood gushing on them. That's where I took the blood and had it sent off and, and um, tested. But I also took it out of the lung. The lung has as much blood as your fingers. But your fingers are absolutely saturated with blood. Absolutely saturated. And again, this was the lung. This is one I had tested. It's just completely, it was almost leaking blood out of there. It was as much as this one was. All right, now. Um, and the DNA tests were very, very well done. 2015, it was fabulous. Now, this is what, this is one of my rocks here. That is literally red flesh. This is a new body part. Not a, nobody knows about this body part right here. <laughs> and I've checked with some of the top anatomists in the world. They say, oh, no, that's just fashion. No, it's a new body part. This right here, this is is an interstitial latch. I call it the spurlock. <laughs> and what is a spurlock? It latches one organ into the rest of the body. Let me see if I can find something here. I have one. Oh, I got one somewhere. Here it is. You see this? Like I say, that is a lung. It's not a human lung, I don't think. It's nice and rounded and everything, but that is the latch right there. You see it? That's that latch. And that latch comes up to hold this lung into the body, whatever, wherever it was. That way there it can float around your body, but it has to come back to wherever the latch attached. And again, this is a lung. Now, I showed you the lung I have here. And that has the same latch, and the other one does too, the one that it eroded away. That latch is underneath. Watch. This is, this is a brand new body part. This latch right here. It's a latch. And it comes right off the end here. They, don't, they see it as all one big piece, but it's not. It's a secondary piece. And that is this part right here. That's this part coming right down the bottom to hold that lung in position so it can roll around in your body and it doesn't get ripped out. Alright, so that's the spur lock. And it's between every organ has one of those. Now, can I show it in the other lung? Yes, I can. Right here. There it is. Now, I believe this little spot right here is the connection which is called the interstitial... Uh, fluid-filled highway and that is where all the blood flows between organ interstitium and interstitium has just been discovered as a new body part and I've been studying this for 10 years more than that because I see it everywhere and I, I, I'm trying to understand why it is the way it is and I think I understand it now that this is is the connection between these interstitial fla or these fascia fabric bags all right, because it is now considered... Well, let me show you something. All right, check this out. Dubbed the interstitium, the new organ 
is a network of fluid-filled cavities found everywhere in your body. Your body is lined with a network of fluid-filled cavities that until now were unknown to science. This is just 2018. And I was studying this with my friend Gil for years. And here it is, meet your interstitium, a newfound organ. All right, this is 2018, and here's this interstitium. It's part of your body. It coats all your organs, and, I mean, it, it coats you and protects you from the rest of the world from invasion. That's what interstitium is. But it has to flow freely, and then it has to be accessible by that fluid-filled highway. And what I showed you here is that fluid-filled highway right there. I believe that's it. All right, so one has to connect to the other. Otherwise, they're the bag on their own. You're losing your interstitium. You're losing your fluid-filled highway. Okay, so here I am going to try to rescue his reputation. Samir, I hope you got a hold of me because you were right, my friend. You are not a pseudo-archaeologist, an alternative, fringe, fantastic, occult, spooky, interpretation of outside the academic academic scientific community. We have to be outside to be a true scientist anymore. The rest of them are just nothing more than drones. Nobody can think for themselves anymore. And if you try to do it, you will be destroyed. As Samir knows, I know, Velikowski knows, and a whole slew of other truth seekers. You see this? This is the kind of nonsense you get from people like at Yale and the people that are extremely incompetent. They attack without seeing anything. This is in April 2006. 21 historians, geologists and archaeologists signed an open letter describing the excavations as amateurish and lacking proper scientific supervision. In other words, he won't say what they want them to say, so they're trying to destroy him from this distance. I'm, I, I can guarantee you they didn't go down there and look at any of this stuff. They all, and probably not even a word that he has said, because that's what happens. All the people that destroyed Velikovsky, they admit it. We never saw it. We don't have to see it. It's beneath us to look at it. It's beneath our scientific knowledge. We're scientists. How should we look at something crazy like that? Well, I'm going to tell you something. You're crazy not to look at it, and you, you are the people that have destroyed archaeology and destroyed truth, and you people are the disgrace. And Yale, I can't believe they, they just slid this paper under about the great worldwide flood that I had been presenting to them since 2012 minimum with all of the evidence that goes behind it. I just showed you or will show you. And Derek Briggs from Yale is taking credit for my research and then it slid that paper so that nobody even knows it exists. Look, this is his paper. Exceptionally preser Exceptional preservation of soft-bodied creatures. Biota just means creatures and plants promoted by silica-rich oceans. There was a worldwide, where is it here? Exceptional preservation of soft body creatures. It was worldwide. Where is it? Here it is right here. It was in this one strata, worldwide. They don't know how the fossils preserve. They have no clue and they don't care about looking. I showed them. I know how they preserve. This is called nucleophilic substitution from these silica saturated waters. They're right. It was a s rapid that means a global flood, precipitation, they make everything sound silly. It's a rapid w flood from silica cements. They're, they are the body fluids. That's what silica cements are. They use them now to put back into, into stones, to turn, to, into crushed up geopolymers to make them back into stones. The Chinese used to add blood into their stone mixtures, their, their geopolymers, to make them Weather resistance, almost they never go bad. This is not un un unknown. It's just undiscovered. And they don't want to discover it. All right? And this was a year after I, oh, oh, years after I had all this stuff done. And, you know, I, I think Derek Briggs, who is supposed to be a big hotshot at 
he's supposed to be the top guy, and he's right down the street from me, 20 miles away, and he refused absolutely still to this day, and is taking credit for this soft tissue preservation. He's calling his own name now. Edicardia style preservation. No, it's not. It's mud fossils. This is literally, I, I, I can't see it any other way. It's my opinion, but I'm, I'm saying this is fraud. This is academic disgrace on Yale and Derek Briggs. I mean, it's the most disgraceful I've ever seen anybody do anything. I have never seen anybody more disgraceful than this from our top universities. This shows you where education is. It is dominance. Without, they can, there's no redress. You either say what you're told to say or we will destroy your life. Well, I don't care. Destroy my life. My life is almost gone, so I don't care. I want truth much more than having a lot of money and whatever it comes with that. That never meant much to me. What meant more to me was trying to understand what I see. I'm trying to understand where, where, you know, I was really never religious. I had nothing to do with that. But I can tell you right now, I am extremely religious right now. And as far as I can determine, Jesus Christ was 100% correct in the things that he said. He said, once you see, you will be disturbed. Once you're disturbed, you will marvel. And he said, the earth is a corpse and the earth is you, once you discover the earth, you will discover the body. Now, and once you discover the earth, you will discover the corpse. And that's exactly what his words were. And that's not mine. That's from Jesus Christ. And it was written down by Doubting Thomas, who was his scribe. And that is in the Nag Hammadi texts. These are new texts that they have found in these caves that were hidden because they were going to be destroyed. They, nobody wants this known. Nobody wants this known up till today. And this, this really strikes a very, very hard nerve in me as to why this is so fought against. How are these people being controlled? It's, it, I mean, it's a, peer review is nothing more than mob you know, intimidation. Don't you dare come against us. We'll destroy you. And that's exactly 100% true. If anybody can d deny that, deny it. Because they won't let you... Pro I can't... I cannot, um, I cannot publish papers. They will not let, let me publish papers. They won't let me do anything, really. I can do it outside the system, just like, like uh, Sam Osmogovich is doing. He's you got to go outside the system. They won't let you into the system. And this is the guy right here, Derek Briggs. It won't let, wouldn't. He's as far as I'm concerned, he's the one that is destroying truth in education, which it covers everything. As far as I'm concerned, it's almost everything. It's geology, history, spirituality, virtually everything. Once you see what I have shown, and then you can go back and say, oh, well, everything else is right. It's just there's a couple of big creatures on Earth, and that's it. It doesn't mean much. No. And Derek, I told you, buddy, this is going to come down on you, and it will. All right, you saw the size of the dragons I'm talking about. These are tendon balls. They're all over the earth, and they are they're just they're littered with these. these the hundreds of thousands of these are in your body right now. But in a dragon, the size of the things we're talking about, that's the size of these balls. In us, you need a, a microscope to see them. This was where it attached. All right, these are the tendon balls that we're talking about. And these were the little straps that engage into these balls, so they lock in and they they anchor all of these straps into bones and and you know t other tendons and so forth, so that you can pull against something, which gives you mobility. Now, um, whoops, this is um, th that's the structure they are now. Here's what they do when they break, right here. They break exactly right there, exactly where I showed on the uh, on these on this tendon ball here from Sam Osgowich. And then they, I show all the kind of things he's showing, which are you know here's another one way out here. These these balls are just gigantic, but that isn't even as big as they get. They get bigger than that. Believe it or not, it's just incredible. The things that were on this earth, I cannot account for them. I don't know how they ate. 
I don't know where they slept. I don't know how they got here in the first place. I mean, I'm, I'm searching ancient texts, and they give a lot of descriptions of how these things were and what they looked like and where they, you know, they, they talk about a lot of stuff. Now, these are the kind of things he's seeing, and he's saying this is a constructed thing. Now, no, it's not. This is literally what the body is constructed of, is these little blocks and so forth. I had another one on here about a 200,000-year-old, this one here. Whoops. Let me just show you something. All right, this is mystery history. They do some nice stuff. You see, these these are dragon scales, too. I'm almost 100% sure. I have found the blood vessels that are in the side where they put up those little arches over them. They, um, they go like this to, to so it doesn't collapse where the, the um, arteries were. And you see them there looking like they're going right down in the line. Now, they're looking at all of these anomalies that are on the earth. Let me see if I can find another one here. Well, here's some right here, whoops. All right, these are the same kind of patterns they were showing before, if I can home in on it. You see, these are, they're looking at these and they're saying, how did these crazy things happen? And then they see this and they say, wow. And then before that, they, they see these holes. That's, a, a, that's an artery, that's an artery. And it goes right down between the membranes. And these are literally membranes and skin tissue and all kinds of stuff. I don't know what kind of creature it was, but it was big. And these are the, the lines in between. Now, there would normally be some, which is called small leucine-rich proteins in us, which is a gooey substance that lets these things move around. Because that's what this would have had to do. It wasn't locked in position. It was, it was a, a fluid, mobile thing. And the, it had to be sealed. Now, what's, what's down in these cracks, what kind of material it is, I don't know. I would love to do some material analysis on that. That's what I do is material stuff. But these are the, these holes. I say, wow, where do these holes come from? Well, they're arteries. And then they're going to find blood in them and stuff. You see this? This is Petra. Where do you see what I'm going to show you in my next video about Petra? These are going to knock your socks right off your feet. And they had a whole batch of different places in Petra that they were doing um, all kinds of different construction on. Now, I'm not saying they didn't make any pyramids. I'm just saying that the vast majority of them were already here, and they just turned them into, into, uh, into what we call pyramids. Here's this guy, a giant, carrying two elephants over his shoulders going home for dinner, have a little elephant soup. And all of these things are not crazy. These are not crazy things. We are the ones that are crazy for not looking into it. And I, I'm not crazy. The people that we're allowing us to be dictated to, which is the professors of like Yale and places like that, you know, to, to me, I see no concern for truth. As long as you say what they say, you'll get your piece of paper. Truth be damned. Okay, so Samir Askovich there was, was right and he was wrong. It, 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 they are not constructed by people. They might have changed something a little bit, just like they did in Egypt, to make them accessible as pyramids. The tunnels are where the blood vessels are in. They have the same ones. They have the exact same things in Egypt. And I just showed this the other day. I did a video on how they capped off. They put all these little angles in there like that so that they wouldn't collapse. They didn't put them in there for some decorative purpose. They put them in so they wouldn't collapse. And they claim that. They know that. Now, we need to... So anyway, Samir is in the right area, but he's got the wrong idea on this thing. It does deserve to be looked into. And all I've looked into his research, and he's looking into these plates that are on there and thinking, oh boy, they, somebody constructed these. No, this, this, we need to look at this very carefully and understand that it's biology, and the whole earth is covered with them. I showed all of this stuff. If you didn't see what I showed, I can't help you. Now, we're going to be, we need to go into the notos too, because this was a whole different species than us. 
You see this? This is the kind of, there, there's, the, the toes were built in. But not only were the toes built in, they had springs instead of, of bones. We have bones. You see the bones coming down here? And we have this heel and we have this strap coming up. Well, this one has springs. No bones. There's the heel. And here's the strap coming up to, our, to the leg which would have come down here. And here's the strap that runs back to the heel. And we got a lot of these, all kinds of different ones in different states of, of um, you know, falling apart. This is, this is the one here, this is mine. Confused? You should be. Um, this is from Tish Egerton. She found these, she took the 15 minute challenge which I put out every now and then. I'll say, if you can't find mud fossils in 15 minutes, I want to know. She went out and found all this stuff in 15 minutes. These are new, well, I don't know if they're new species, but I can tell you what. These, were, these toes, I believe, were built in. And then it almost looks like a wing nut. You see that? If you look at that really carefully, look at that thing. That looks just like a wing nut. Like somebody bolted that up there. You see that? Look at that. And they have they have a soul on these things. It's almost like a soul. It, it almost looks like a soul. You see that? I had the same thing in here. There was something went in that right in that same spot. This of course is oh man, this thing's heavy. Or I'm getting weak. Alright, anyway. These toes were built right in and they fall off like little sausages. Now let me show you something which is really cool. Watch this. Observe and learn. Now, what did I say? There were springs built in them. And what is this? Well, this is the thing I'm talking about. That's the heel. That strap right there went all the way up to the bone that could sit down in this cradle. That, there would have been a bone right in this cradle, something similar to this running all the way up your leg and this strap would have come right up to it to hold it down basically to hold it to your heel now why is this wrinkly looking here why is that i'll tell you exactly why this is a, this is a tendon what is a tendon it keeps tension tension means it's pulling hard when it snaps, it wrinkles. These are called the wrinkle zones. This is all wrinkled up here. All right, you see it? Wrinkle all, all that wrinkly looking stuff? That's because the tendon has untensioned itself. Bye. All right, well, I'm just going to finish this up for now, but then we're going to look close at this. The things you need to look at is the different coloration of the growth. You say, well, what does that have to do with it? Oh, everything that grows, grows differently on different types of materials. The very green growth is growing on blood. Blood makes very green growth. The lighter colored is on a different type of material. It's whatever these plants live on dictates the color that they are going to grow. I'm telling you right now, nitrogen makes things grow very, very fast and green. And that's what you see right here. This is a blood area. All right, pay close attention. Remember I showed you this is a dragon scale. I believe that is exactly the same place where that blood and all that nice green growth is growing over there that Sam had in on, on his Bosnian pyramid. This is the dragon in Morocco. And guess what? Normally you don't see a lot of green things growing in a desert. This was a cut through his throat. And that is literally red blood, and that is the black blood, which is the vein blood. And it's just running out. It's just running out from that gash. And guess what that gash has produced? The greenest of green things growing here in the desert. This is water coming through here. Water doesn't come through growing green like that. That's not your normal water just running out of there. That's because it was saturated with red blood. They sell blood meal. You know what else they sell is feather meal. Feathers make things grow very green as well. And in the desert, they do that exactly the same. See over here? These are feathers. 
and they're growing quite green. You see, this, there's some kind of feathers going on out here. You see them? And you see how it's growing green up here where, where the blood supply would be? Running right down the ridge. And they grow the same way in the United States on Quetzalcoatl. Let's just take a quick look at that, and then I'm going to wrap this up for today. And then we're going to go in and look at Sam Asagawa's details. And then again, you see this color? You see this color? That is because this is the red blood running off in here, growing things nice and green. This is the dragon scales. And the same thing you see over there on that Bosnian period. Well, period. One part of it is growing nice and green, and the other part is growing a little less green. Is exactly why, and here's his beard and everything coming out of here. You see the beard? And he runs all the way up the east coast, all the way up to here. And I've shown again the feathers coming out of his head. This is his headdress. That whole thing is Quetzalcoatl's headdress. And these are feathers. And here's a feather right here, precisely like the one I have right here that I will show you. Uh, let me see here. Coming right out of his head out of Little Rock is the feathers. You see it? There is no difference whatsoever between these two feathers, except one is bigger than the other one. <laughs> and uh, that's a pretty good sized feather. And uh, that's coming right out of Quetzalcoatl's head, right there. There's this whole headdress. All feathers and then feathers up here at the other end which are the green mountains and they grow green because feather meal makes things grow green just the way life is all right so that's it for today we're going to go back in and look at some more of this ancient history that we are being denied by all of these archaeologists that think they're so smart they have destroyed truth on earth they have destroyed your your knowledge they have destroyed knowledge. These are our educators, the destroyers of knowledge. All right, I said they, that Typhon was on the map. Here it is right here. Remember I said his tail flares way out at the end? Here's the tail flaring way out. There's the Red Sea. This was all the known world in um, 1375. And this is, this is where his neck was caught right there. That was a cutthroat. And then below it, I believe they knew that Atlantis was in this area because they're showing something, boats coming into this area. Now, um, but this shows that they, they were aware of this dragon. Now, they may have some other ones over here in this area, and um, I'm not sure about Bosnia. I, I, you know, I don't know these areas over here that well, what they're actually showing. But they were aware of other ones, especially over in this area. Look at all in in uh, Iceland and Greenland areas like that. I believe these are all dragonish things. And um, and up in here, that could very well be too. I don't know where Bosnia Herzegovina is or wherever Sam's dragon is, but this could be one right up here. I, I, they were everywhere. I don't know if they knew where they were, but they were everywhere. And they are the earth right now just what it is okay stay tuned for the next video is going to be really really cool we're going to be talking about star talk cosmic queries where did all of these chemicals from from what are they i know what they are and i'll explain to you exactly what they are now he admits he has very little chemical background and um you know they, these guys focus on one little thing and you can't do that you have to understand the whole realm of things so when we get into this it's going to be very interesting but like i say the biology that's in space is no difference than the biology that's here on earth as above so below <laughs>